Ngayon na umaga po, ito po ang News TV Live. Nagsimula na po ang media briefing, kaugnay ng nakatakdang pagbisita ni po Francis sa Bansa sa Enero. Panoorin po natin ito. Hintay po natin ang pagsisimula ng naturang uh, press briefing. Apat na po't walong araw na lang po darating na sa Pilipinas si Pope Francis. Sa kaniyang pagbisita, nakalatag na po ang mga aktibidad niya para sa loob ng apat na araw na pananatili niya rito sa ating bansa. Mula sa Sri Lanka, inaasahan darating ang Santo Papa ng alas 5 ng hapon sa Maynila sa January 15. Magkakaroon po ng motorcade patungo sa Apostolic Nunchature sa Taft Avenue. Ang nunsyatsyore na Embassy of the Holy See ang magsisilbing official residence ni Pope Francis sa Pilipinas. Sa umaga po ng January 16, opisyal siyang iwo-welcome ni Pangulong Noynoy Aquino sa Malacanang. Makakadaupang palad po ng ating Santo Papa ang ilang pang miyembro ng Diplomatic Corps. Matapos ang reception sa Malacanang, magkakaroon ulit ng motorcade si Pope patungo sa Manila Cathedral sa Intramuros at doon siya magsasagawa ng kaniyang unang misa. Panuorin po natin ito. At the press conference uh, via Radio Veritas 846 today. Okay. To start off, the media briefing, let us all rise for the opening prayer to be led by Father Francis Lucas. Basbasan mo po, mahal na Ama, ang pinagpipitaga ng kalupunan na natitipon dito upang ipalaganap ang iyong pagmamahal sa bansang Pilipinas sa pagdalaw ng banal na Papa Francis. Gabayan mo po ang umagang ito upang malinaw na matalakay ang paghahanda, pagbubuklod bisig ng simbahan at pamahalahan, ang pagtanggap namin at pagpapadaloy ng marubdob at tapat na pag-aruga sa banal na papa. Sa ngalan ni Kristong aming Panginoon. Amen. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Okay, good morning. I'm your moderator today. I'm Ms. Nina. And the panelists are for this week's media briefing, Ambassador okay, Ambassador Marciano Uh, Painor Jr., the Executive Director of the National Organizing Committee of the Papal Visit, Father Jaime Marquez, the Secretary to Bishop Ray Evangelista, Bishop in Charge of Accommodations, Father Hasalito Hobson, the Executive Secretary of the Episcopal Commission on Social Communications of the CBCP, Father Francis Lucas, um, he's the president of the Catholic Media Network. Father Anton Pascual, the president of Radio Veritas. Now for the opening statement, I'd like to give you Father Anton Pascual. Good morning to everyone for our second pre-papal visit weekly media briefing overview. The pre-papal visit weekly media briefing now on its second week aims to give further relevant information of the upcoming pastoral visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to the Philippines this coming January 15 to 19 2015 last November 20 last week we were talking about the general overview of the theme mercy and compassion that uh, Pope Francis would like to share with us and the healing presence of God's love, especially in behalf of the victims of uh, calamities, both natural and man-made. For this week, press briefing, we will focus on Pope's arrival, transportation, security, and accommodation. These are very important concerns we would like to advise the public through you. There are four key elements of our press briefing today. First, the safety of the Pope and the public. Number two, the close collaboration of the church and the government. Number three, the simplicity of the preparation 
which is the closely observed in the entire papal visit as requested by the Holy Father. And fourth, which is good for us, our country, we will uh, show the Holy Father the famous Filipino hospitality at its best. Let us focus on these four areas in our press briefing today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father Anton Pascual. And now, I shall give you the statements of the panelists, starting off with Ambassador Marciano Bainor Jr. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, friends, uh, good morning. Uh, today, we are uh, going to talk about uh, four areas that are very important in the uh, visit of uh, His Holiness uh, the Pope. Uh, but I would like just to focus on one particular uh, area, and that's the security. And when we talk about security, it's not uh, only the security of the Pope, but also the security of the people who are there to uh, join the Pope. And uh, <clears throat> uh, here we would like to to say that, uh, and and like to reiterate the President's uh, commitment that the uh, all the uh, the government's 100% uh, commitment to the uh, visit of the of His Holiness the Pope and uh, offering the resources of government in collaboration and very close collaboration with the church uh, but uh, we cannot do this by ourselves the committee, the church committee, the government committee uh, will need the collaboration of everyone and uh, here we emphasize the role that the, uh, our uh, uh, compatriots uh, in the Catholic Church who will want to see the Pope, their role as both audience and as actual participants. And here we would like to emphasize more their participation in ensuring that the Pope's visit here will be one which he will remember because of our unique hospitality, the way that we uh, treat our uh, guests, but also in the way that we behave. And this is, I think, one uh, time in our history where we can show to the Pope and to the whole world that we as a people can offer the kind of hospitality that will keep him safe, that will keep everyone safe as well. So. Uh, those in general terms are what we would like to, to say for now and uh, uh, we hope that everyone will take this into their consciousness so that it's not just a question of there being an audience but rather being a participant to the whole uh, visit of, the, of His Holiness the Pope. Thank you very much. Thank you so much Ambassador uh, Roshana Paynor. Now, uh, the next one to give the statement is the Under Secretary of uh, PCOO, the Presidential Communications Operations Office, none other than Yusek Chess Q. Good morning. As uh, mentioned by Ambassador Painor, uh, <coughs> the government uh, is in close coordination and collaboration with the Church, and uh, we will provide all the necessary assistance that will be needed you know, to ensure the safety uh, of the Pope. Uh, not only of the Pope, but also of those who will be attending. So we will continue to uh, coordinate with the Church uh, on this uh, regarding this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yusek Chess Q. So now let's go to the statement and hear the statement of Father Jaime Marquez. For the service committee under the accommodations, we are quite fascinated by the coming of the Holy Father because it comes right after the Christmas joy when we remember that Jesus did not have any accommodations. That is why we are so fascinated and at the same time see, see this as providential for us because the Holy Father is coming to us at a time when people need Jesus the most. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father Jaime Marquez. So let's hear from Father 
Marcelito Hobson for his statement now. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would just like to deliver the official statement of Bishop Jess Mercado, uh, Bishop of uh, the Diocese of Paranaque, and he is the chairman of the Arrival and Departure uh, Committee. So this is the, his statement on behalf of the people of Paranaque and of the rest of the Philippines in welcoming the Holy Father. Dear friends, I cannot be present with you this morning because we priests of the Diocese of Paranaque are offering a special Mass for our brother priests and esteemed lay leaders who have passed away in 2014. They have spent their lives for God and for country. We owe them our thanks and our prayers. We're also having our Advent recollection in preparation for the 2015 Year of the Poor. Our theme is, Pamayanan ng mga aba, bayang pinagpala. Nevertheless, I am happy to send this greeting to you. We shall be welcoming the Holy Father at dusk on January 15 next year. Despite the gathering darkness, we plan to brighten up the night with the warmth of our love. Pope Francis, as a successor of St. Peter and the Vicar of Christ, speaks not only for Jesus, but especially in behalf of the poor. When he disembarks from the plane, 1,200 young men and women will greet him with vibrant music and dance. Two children will offer him flowers. They will be orphans who have come to know God as our Father through the love and care of selfless men and women. Now we are still working on the other details. We shall share them with you so that you can share our excitement. Because Pope Francis has brought us together, men and women of faith, men and women of government. We thank God for the goodwill with which we work together. We are confident that after the Pope's plane has left on January 19, after the red carpet has been rolled up, after the last light bulb has been switched off, we shall sleep soundly with the hope that Filipinos can forge a nation of mercy and compassion through a life of integrity. Personal integrity, integrity in the family, integrity in work and politics, integrity in communities of faith, promoting the integrity of creation. God bless you all from Bishop Jesse Mercado, Chairman, Arrival and Departure Committee. And uh, before I uh, forget, I have an announcement to make um, uh, 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 on behalf of uh, Bishop Milo Hubert Bergara, the Chairman of the Committee of Information and Media, that uh, our next briefing will be on December 2, uh, 1 p.m. Also here in the same venue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father Joselito Hobson. So the floor is now open to your questions. So may um, I remind our colleagues from the media to uh, kindly um, approach Ms. Joy here in case you have any questions. And um, kindly state your name, uh, the media outfit you, you represent, and then you may ask one question and one follow-up question per turn. Thank you so much. Okay, the gentleman um, is wearing a uh, blue t-shirt, please. Okay, Father Marquez. Uh, I'm Manny Mulato of Reuters. Hello, Manny. Sir, uh, we only have a concern because as of now, we have heard on the TV and radio that hotels in Manila are already jacking up their prices in anticipation of many people 
coming to the Pope. Yes, that's what, economics. Yes. What can the church or the government do to uh, bring down the prices? Because I, I, in, in, in South Korea, mm -hmm. the, the highest hotel rate, according to my colleague here, is about $200. But I think Manila Hotel is now charging $400 a night. And the small ones are also rise, uh, raising their prices. Uh, since this is uh, uh, the message of the Pope is uh, mercy and compassion, how can we lower uh, prices to, to accommodate all people? Um, that is an economic question, and I appreciate your, your question. Um, maybe we could refer that also to the Department of Tourism so that they could talk to the uh, individual uh, uh, companies, but how we can do that is uh, let us appeal to you know to to all the business sector to to consider all these things. You know, um, there are many people who are very accommodating. So if you if you find friends coming from abroad, and if you feel that they are having a hard time with this uh, with this hotel fees, let us accommodate them in our own homes as well. Okay, if you will have a problem with your friend, you tell me. You, you, I can accommodate them in my parish. Okay. <laughs> okay. The excuse me. Uh, the lady in grey, please. Morning. I'm Simone. I'm here for a Catholic News Service. Uh, this question is actually for Ambassador Pinor. It's a logistics question. Um, there. As I understand it, I was not here. In 1995, there were just, the crowd control was basically not non-existent or that it was very difficult to try to make way for people to pass, for, for um, media, say, trying to get to events. What kind of, um, what are the logistics? How are you going to ensure that we uh, selfishly will we will be able to get to the venues we need to get to and if we could even pass with vehicles because i understand that we're probably going to be walking all over the place thank you uh thank you very much for your question i'm sorry i didn't get your name Sol. Simon. Simon. Uh, uh, simon simon uh, yes, I, I handled the 1995 uh, visit as well, and uh, your, your uh, observation is correct. Uh, we did use uh, uh, police forces to line up the, the roads, uh, hoping that this would be sufficient to contain the crowds. But the outpouring of enthusiasm uh, when the Pope passed, or when they anticipated the Pope to, uh, that the Pope was coming, they all uh, moved uh, and pushed forward. So that was the, that was the case then. Um, we are continuously trying to see how we can resolve that particular problem without unduly uh, affecting the way that the crowd can see the Holy Father or be able to have at least visual contact with him. Uh, because um, if, if we are to prorate, let's say, the population then and the population now and the numbers that will be out there on the streets, then uh, the problem becomes a little bit more uh, significant and uh, complicated. So we are still in the process of finding out how we can do it. But, uh, barriers definitely will, will work. There are so many other things uh, that we are considering, but one of the most important things is that in my opening statement, uh, there should be a close collaboration between and amongst the church, the organizers, both church and government, as well as the people. And so the church is now through the parishes, uh, encouraging everyone to, uh, in a sense, contain themselves, contain their enthusiasm, so that when they are placed up, up front, no, they, uh, no pushing, no shoveling, just to be able to see uh, uh, His Holiness the Pope. And if I as a lay person may uh, just make a statement, I, as long as I can see His Holiness there and He gives a blessing, then I am blessed as well regardless of where I physically am. So if we can, uh, through your help, uh, continue to tell our people that 
this is the way that it should be done, as it had been done in many other countries where the Pope had visited, where, for instance, in one particular country, they just draw a line. No physical barriers, no police, and nobody steps over the line. So if we can ask our people to have that kind of a concept within here and here, then I think we will be able to resolve that particular logistic problem. Yes, please. That's correct. We are, the government's talking to, uh, up to the barangay level, the church is talking to the parish level. So we are going down to that level so that we ask our people to participate rather just, than just be onlookers and being there uh, for their own personal uh, reasons. So if they are there for their reasons, yes, uh, that's welcome. But if they are there also to help out and ensure that the safety, the physical safety of the Pope is ensured, and their own safety, then uh, we would have both uh, won uh, both sides. Another question, please? Anybody who would like to Yes. Um, the lady in black, Ms. Rita. Good morning, Po. Uh, Rita Reyes from GME 7. I would just like to ask, the Pope will be staying here for a total of four days, three days in Manila, and then a uh, whole day in Tacloban. So, um, have you uh, talked, has the government and the church uh, already talked about uh, the possibility of declaring a holiday for all those four days, or at least Thursday and Friday? Thank you. If I may reiterate the statement of the Executive Secretary during the first briefing, uh, he said that we are seriously considering. We are seriously considering and in due time uh, uh, will announce if uh, there is uh, going to be holidays on those days. But I recall that when Pope John Paul II came here, I think uh, there were some holidays that were also uh, declared. If, if only one to allow people to join in uh, welcoming the Pope, and but second also so that there will be less traffic on the roads because there will be massive traffic jams. If uh, with the Pope clo uh, and with all the crowds coming, there will be road closures and and detours. So the lesser, if it's a holiday, then people who are going to work will not be affected. So uh, it's under very very serious and close study. Thank you. Anybody else? The gentleman at the back wearing a white polisher. Hello, uh, Father Pascual. I'm Vito Barcelo from LA Standard. Where will Pope Francis stay in Manila and in Tacloban? Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Father Jimmy Marquez would like to answer that. What is the position? Uh, the Holy Father will be staying in a very secure place and uh, taken care of by the church. Um, I hope you understand, no? We have to keep it low, Muna. I hope you understand. Another question, please? Anybody so, would like to... Okay, the gentleman in white polisher, white and blue. Father Anton Glanwego, DCWB. Father, uh, may mga reported na may binibigay na raw kayong passes. May ganun na? So, yung pong mga kwentong yan is unofficial and not true na wala pong ibinibigay na passes, ticket, or special privileges ang simbahan para sa papal visit. Father Lito, would you like to add more? Anybody else would like to ask a question? Okay, the gentleman in blue uh, polisher. Um, good morning, I'm Joel Ginto from AFP. Uh, what a type of vehicle will the Pope be using when he goes around uh, Manila and in Tacloban?
the Pope will be provided with a Pope mobile, but again, for security reasons, we would defer uh, mentioning what uh, specific type of vehicle that the Pope will be using. But uh, the government and the church has been uh, in discussions, and uh, we have uh, uh, already decided on what uh, particular vehicle the Pope will be using, and also in consultation with the Vatican. Thank you. Sir, will, will this be a closed uh, vehicle uh, that he is visible from the crowd outside, like what uh, John Paul II used in '95? Uh, there will be instances that uh, the Pope will be uh, vis definitely the Pope will be vis visible to the public. No? There will be vehicles that uh, will be open, and there and there will be times that uh, the Pope will be using closed vehicles. Thank you. Sir, uh, did, did the Pope request that uh, he, he will be allowed to use uh, an open vehicle, uh, like you said, and, and in which instances will this be used and won't this uh, raise uh, security concerns? Again, the, um, we would like just to inform the public that this is in consultation with the, the Vatican. Now, with respect to uh, security concerns, uh, the uh, organizing committee has been in uh, consultations with the Vatican uh, regarding this, and we are uh, considering all of all possible uh, options uh, to, to ensure the safety of the Pope. Okay, I would like to... Uh, I think the color of the papal mobile is white. No. <laughs> okay, follow-up question. Yes, sir, just so ang mangyayari po is hindi nyo i-divulge talaga yung uh, mga ruta ng uh, Santo Pampa. Hanggang kailan po? Uh, Pinag-uusapan pa yun, ano, kasi nga maraming mga konsiderasyon, no? Hindi lang yung, ano, uh, yung, yung dadaanan mismo lang, no? Pero yung kapasidad nung, nung dadaanan for crowds at saka for emergencies, and for other vehicles, whether kung dumaan tayo doon, meron ba, pwede ba, nating mag, pwede ba tayong mag-reroute? Yung mga ganun. Kasi nga, as much as possible, ang sabi ng Papa, eh, let us not, uh, di, let us not uh, try to disrupt uh, normal, regular uh, work. No? He, he realizes that his presence here will definitely disrupt. Pero kung pwede natin ma-minimize, yun ang gagawin natin. So, Sa ngayon ho, talagang pinag-aaralan ho natin lahat ng mga kalsada natin, yung mga lugar na pupuntahan niya, at saka yung mga, alam naman ho natin, may mga construction areas, makakasikip na ito, yung mga ganun ho. So, at an appropriate time, sasabihin ho namin sa inyo lahat, and I think everyone will have an opportune time to at least to see, digest, and plan. Uh, because anyway, two-thirds of the activities of the Pope will, will be within the metro Manila area, and uh, the one in Tacloban, eh, one day lang naman yon. Uh, again, limited din yung roads nila doon, so yun, pinag-aaralan ho lahat. All possible, uh, all possibilities, all possible combinations, and uh, mga ganun ho. So, uh, meantime, kung pwede ho, uh, pakihintay na lang. Thank you. Okay, may we call on the gentleman in um, light blue. Paula. Hi, sir. Pwede kay Ambassador Pinor or the others. Sir, in, uh, in terms of just just in terms of pre preparing for this event, uh, we'd, we'd like to know what estimate of the crowd size, uh, crowd size are you looking at uh, in terms of security preparation for the Luneta Mass and, and the event in Tacloban? And can we ask you what what's the structure of the security committee is well, which lead which which is the lead agency is it pnp or afp or psg and who do we coordinate with in terms of the security and in terms of our move the media movement uh thank you very much dean that was a very very comprehensive question crowd size uh we again if we we do uh uh, prorate the the estimated crowd during Pope John Paul and the uh, and the population at the time, which was what 65, 70 million, uh, and we had an estimate of about four to five million. In fact, some said the high of six. 
we're now 100 million. So, but if we include ev all the crowds, all the crowds, it will be more than six, I think. For if we, no, for the entire, for the entire visit. Uh, the Luneta visit is uh, constrained by, by the physical size of the Luneta, but if you include all the streets that lead to Luneta where people will already stop there because there's no way for them to move forward because the place is already full, if we, we, we connect all of that, then we have a very, very huge crowd. We don't know exactly how much. Uh, we, we, have, we have people who are determining by the squares, uh, but this uh, square meter size, no? And per square meter, uh, let's say about four or five, pack six, but comfortable four. So we are doing all of that in, in, in a scientific basis as we can. In Taklovan, it's the same. Very limited uh, area at the, uh, at the apron of the airport, but a huge area between Taklovan and uh, Papa Nunchatur and the uh, Archbishop residence. So that is, uh, again, another consideration. Now, as far as the security committee is concerned, uh, uh, it is uh, both headed both by uh, the Secretary of Interior and the Department of National Defense. Uh, but when it comes to the Pope's security, it's a PSG, because he, he is also a head of state. So that is how, how it is divided. But uh, there is a security committee both from the church as well as uh, from government. Okay, due to time concerns. Take note, ah, take note ah, sa ating lahat, no, maobserbahan nyo, pag uh, ang ating mahal na papa, meron siyang close in security, no, mga nakamerta ng itim. Ito yung mga tinatawag na Swiss guards, no. For the last 500 years, since the 16th century, for the last 500 years, ito ang nakatutok uh, sa papa, no, to protect, their mission is to protect the Pope, no, at all times. Swiss guards, mga, mga 18 to 30 years old sila, binata, katoliko, no? at uh, sa ating mga Pilipina, walang asawa. No? Yeah, no? Sila, eh, five eight ang height nila. The minimum height is 5'8". No? Uh, binata, uh, sa kanilang tour of duty, three years, no? from Switzerland, katoliko. No? And they are the close-in of the Holy Father. And they will close in security of the Holy Father at ang kanilang mission to protect the life of the Pope for the last 500 years. Yeah. Well, we have to talk that out with the government. Sila ang bahala with the PSG, with the PNP. Meron tayong relationship sa kanilang. How many close in securities? How many close in securities? Of course, it is... Uh, Security. That's why classified information. No, sabi ganila eh. Uh, I have to inform you, but I have to kill you. Sabi na James Bond. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, due to time constraint, uh, we're down. You're down to your last two questions. So uh, the gentleman on, um, uh, Sir, on the blue yeah, collar. Thank you. Yes. On the church side, uh, will there be a point in the Pope's visit when? The, the Philippine Catholic Church or some representatives will report to the Pope some some issues relate local issues related to to the Catholic Church in the Philippines like sex abuse cases or certain controversial issues. We, wh when will that uh, briefing happen to the Pope? Well, uh, uh, for one, the Church is always uh, abreast with the issues happening in the Philippines. And uh, Cardinal Tagle is always uh, communicating with uh, Vatican, especially the Holy Father, uh, Pope, Pope Francis. But I, I believe that these issues will come in, uh, in due time. They will be discussed in uh, due time. What is important as of this uh, moment is to give a rousing welcome to the Holy Father and to accord him with uh, Filipino uh, hospitality. And um, I believe that the different issues um, uh, which are uh, predominant in the Pope's visit are um, his uh, meeting with the poor, with the families, and with the young people. Huh? All in the spirit of mercy and compassion. Okay, last question. Yung nakaraang uh, Veritas Truth Survey, you know, na aping uh, sinabi sa inyo, 1,200 respondents, ano ang gusto ng mga Pilipino na talakayin ng mahal na Papa? No? Ang majority ang nagsabi, talakayin ng Santo Papa, paano lumalim ang pananampalataya? 
Pangalawa, talakayin ang Santo Papa tungkol sa pamilya. At pangatlo, tungkol sa kabataan. No? Yan ang, uh, yan ang uh, survey na lumabas. No? Palalimin ang pananampalataya. Paano palalimin ang pananampalataya? Sa pamilya, no? buhay ng pamilya, at uh, sa mga kabataan. Okay. okay, last question coming from the lady in black and white. I'm attending for National Catholic Report. I, I have to one to follow up to Jim. Uh, I just wanted to know you um, last time the military ordinary, the the Catholic chaplains had some role in security. Maybe not of the Pope, but um, other officials. Is are they going to be mobilized um, this time? for this visit, what is the role of the uh, military ordinary in security or anything? And uh, yes, they, they, they will participate as I know that the committee, in the committee, the church is also uh, involved. So they are participating. We'll contact them then. Um, then As a matter of fact, there is a meeting with Bishop Tumulak, no? which is the head of the military ordinary. No? They are very much uh, uh, in the loop no? and in charge no? of this uh, preparation also. Okay. All right. Okay, the floor is now closed for questions. And uh, now for the closing statement, let's hear from Father Antonio. Before the closing statement, we'd like to inform you next uh, week, our uh, third uh, pre-papal visit uh, media briefing will be December 2, no? 1 p.m. Uh, here at this place, uh, uh, the Knights of Columbus building, and the topic would be the uh, Malacanang ceremony of the Holy Father with the President and the Dipl Diplomatic Corps. So please uh, uh, be here next week. Okay, attending in this uh, conference are uh, uh, Cardinal Tagle and Bishop Milo Vergara and yes. also uh, uh, Secretary Coloma from the government. So muli po, uh, pasalamat tayong muli at ipagdasal po natin ang sagumpay ng uh, uh, Mercy and Compassion Papal Visit 2015. At yan po ang media briefing, kaugnay ng uh, nakatakdang pagbisita po ni Pope Francis sa Enero uh, o January 15. At uh, sumentro nga po ang uh, pulong balitaan sa plano at paghahanda para sa pagdating ng Santo Papa. Kabilang na po ang seguridad, ang kanyang akumadasyon, ang uh, kanyang transportasyon at syempre ang uh, paniniguro no, na magiging payak ang uh, paghahanda at ang selebrasyon na base na rin po sa hiling ng Santo Papa at sinisigurong maibabahagi po sa Santo Papa ang famous Filipino hospitality para masigurong ito po ay hindi kailanman malilimutan ng Santo Papa yung kanyang pagbisita dito sa ating bansa. Napakahalaga rin po na mapaghandaan di lamang ang kaligtasan ng Santo Papa kundi pati na rin ng mga taong dadalo na inaasahang milyon-milyon at sinisiguro rin po ng gobyerno ang kanilang 100% commitment kaugnay po sa papal visit at magkakaroon din po ng close collaboration sa pagitan ng simbahan at ng gobyerno sa pagdating ng ating Santo Papa sa bansa. Tutok lang po dito sa GMA News TV para oras-oras. Alam mo, ako po si Marie Umali. Magandang umaga po.